Hey, Tim with Perkins Roofing here. And if you're getting a new roof and you would like to know what your contractor is doing, what you're paying for, and all the parts of a roof that go into a re-roof or a new roof, then this is the video for you. Check it out. We're going to go through item by item the most important parts of the roof so you know what you're paying for. And when people are talking about this or that, you know what we're talking about. Something to keep in mind with roof measurements is that overhangs will add square footage to your roof so you can't just use the square footage of the inside of the home most overhangs add three to four feet around on the eaves additionally besides the overhangs another factor that you have to take into account when measuring roofs is the slope of the roof so this roof is a relatively easy slope it's a three on twelve and when we say a three on 12 slope, that is rise over run. So that means that you have three inches up for every 12 inches across, rise over run. So this is a three on 12, which three on 12, four on 12, five on 12 are the most standard that you'll see for a sloped residential. When doing roof measurements, roofers measure by the square. So a square is 100 square feet. The open area of the roof away from the perimeter is considered the roof field. So this is what we're looking at right here would be the field of the roof because it's not at a perimeter. It's not at a detail like the ridge here, which we'll get into. So the field is just the center areas of the roof. This area right here behind me is the ridge of the roof. So this right here, the top portion is the ridge of the roof. There can be multiple ridges in one roof. See, this is a ridge right here. This that I'm staying on top of is a ridge. We have another ridge here. And then over the garage is another ridge. The roof we're working on right now doesn't have any hips. It just has these ridges. But this roof behind me, this is a hip right here. So this area coming down, this right here, that's the hip of the roof. Whereas the top right here on this roof across is a ridge. Just like what I'm standing on right now is the ridge. Over here, you can see the guys are working on this valley of the roof. The valley is where we have two slope roofs meet and it forms a V. The inside of that V is the valley. This section of the roof behind me, where we have our flat roof that comes into the wall, and we have our tile roof up here, is the gable. So right here and right here is the return of the roof. Most of the time when you have a return, it's when you have a valley ending, and then it ends in a return that runs off of the roof. Here, the reason we have these two returns is because we have this gable here at the center, and the roof comes out this way so the return is back up in here and this is going to be boxed in with metal this return right here is getting boxed in with metal right now and returns and valleys like you see here are the weakest points on the roof this is generally where you find most of your roof leaks because the water is all going to come to here on this side and on this side and meet in the center and you can see here we have two sheets of plywood that meet now we're building a cricket here and we're gonna have metal, so it should strengthen the valley. But these weak points like the valley and the return over there are where most of your roofing problems happen on a slope roof. One of the points where a lot of confusion happens with new roofers or with people who don't know is between the eave of the roof and the rake of the roof. So this behind me right here is the rake of the roof. You're gonna have a rake where you have the side like this. The eave is going to be where everything runs off the edge. So the water's not gonna run off the edge of the rake. But down here at the end of the roof, that's the eave. The water is gonna run off of the eave. On the flat roof, there's no rake on a flat roof. See this flat roof here behind me? This is The entire perimeter on this flat roof is going to be an eave because that is where the water is gonna be running off. So all of these behind me, these are not eaves. These are rakes. Whereas if I flip you around here, this is an eave and the back end of this tile roof where the water is gonna run off here is an eave. This is our drip metal here. This is 
gonna be installed four inches on center. This is just a placeholder for now to tack the paper down. But this drip metal here, you can see there's a very kick on the end so that the dripping of the water will kick away from the roof. And here's a one by two wood nailer. The wood nailer is important because it separates, you can see it separates the drip metal a little more from the fascia. There's a room where the water's gonna kick away from the fascia instead of running down the fascia and rotting the fascia out. And so this drip metal here is going to be installed on the rakes and the eaves of the roof. And it usually comes in a few standard colors of white, brown, and mill finish. You see behind me, this is the fascia right here. And you can see this is rotted out, this old fascia. It's got to be replaced. And right here is the wood nailer. This is the old wood nailer right here. And this is what the drip edge, which I just showed you, is going to be sitting on to kick the water away from the fascia. So, so much rot does not occur on the fascia over time. Another point of confusion that a lot of people get, a lot of homeowners, is between the fascia and the soffit. The fascia is the front side of the wood here that's going to stick out. And on the bottom here, this is the soffit. So this soffit is the overhang. It's the bottom side of the overhang. Usually the soffit is plywood, sometimes it's stuccoed or plastered over. And then the fascia is usually a 1x6 or a 1x8 wood. So fascia is right here, and soffit is the bottom part. So behind me, this is the fascia on the roof eave here. And there's our wood nailer right here, the brown. And then right here above me is our soffit and our soffit screen. So the soffits, a lot of the times you'll see like on this whole soffit, there are screens and you need the screens for attic ventilation. And uh, per Florida building code, you're supposed to have one square foot of openings for attic ventilation for every 150 square feet of roof. So you can see the front of the house here, they don't have the screens, but on the sides they have the screens, which is just an aesthetic uh, design reason. You don't need to have screens everywhere. It's just for every square amount of square footage of the attic space, you need X amount of square footage of soffit ventilation. The next thing we're gonna talk about is our field penetrations. So penetration is anything that's sticking out of the roof because it's penetrating out of the roof deck. So right here is a vent for a bathroom. It's gonna get a lead stack around it. You'll also see other kinds of vents like gooseneck vents, but it looks like on this roof, we're pretty barren right now. They're gonna install a gooseneck at some point, the plumber is, but I guess he hasn't showed up yet to put their new gooseneck vent in. See, here's another vent, this is a bigger one. It's gonna be another lead stack vent right there. So these are roof penetrations, anything that sticks out of the roof. There used to be an AC duct here that came outside, but uh, it wasn't working anymore, so we took it out. So that'd be another example of a penetration is the AC ducts sticking out outside of the roof. Another common form of a penetration in a roof that you'll see is a skylight. A lot of people like to put skylights in their roof so that they can see the sky. It lights up rooms really nice, especially bathrooms that are inside and you have no windows. So skylights are a great way to do that, but it is a roof penetration. And the more penetrations that you put on the roof, the more weak points you are also adding to the roof and most leaks are gonna be found around valleys, returns, penetrations, the weak points of the roof. The next thing you need to know is about roof transitions. So, like on this roof, some roofs have a sloped roof and a flat roof, or different types of roofs that meet. Like right here, we have a sloped roof and a flat roof. So this sloped roof transitions into the flat roof. Here. Now this is a roof transition. It's a good thing we're doing both roofs at the same time, otherwise you have to put a transition roll down. Like this roof that's getting done next door. They're doing the slope roof, but they didn't do the flat roof. You can see the flat roof is still old behind me. And there's the slope roof. And they had to put one roll right here down the transition to tie the transition in from the old roof to the new roof. So that there's not a leak right here when they put a new roof on and you have your old roof. If you don't put this transition roll here, it's not gonna tie in correctly and you're gonna have a uh, back lap where one roof is gonna be pointed the wrong way toward the other roof. The next sort of transition we're gonna talk about in a very important part of the roof is any wall transitions. 
So a wall transition is anytime you're gonna tie the roof up to go vertically up a wall. So right here, this is a wall transition. And you can't just terminate it like how we have behind me. There's gonna be a, what's called a termination bar, metal that's going to be installed first. And then after that, we're gonna put a counter flashing in. Counter flashing is a stucco stop. It's also known as stucco stop. That's gonna go over the termination bar and there's gonna be a caulk bead above it. You can either terminate it by putting a caulk bead or you can terminate it by doing the stucco back over the stucco stop metal slash counter flashing metal. Now we didn't cut the stucco here. You can cut the stucco and put it into the stucco and then re-stucco over it. So our termination is we're gonna put a termination bar, we're gonna put our counter flashing metal and then we're gonna put a caulk bead on the top so that water doesn't get behind the metal. Now from the front, so you can see it from a ground level, here's our rake with our fascia on the rake. And then here is an eave. So this is an eave. The other thing to think about is gutters are only going to go on eaves. You will not have gutters on a rake. So here again is an eave over the front door, but then on this side where it's sloped, that's a rake. The last section of the roof we're gonna talk about is the gutters and the downspout. You can see behind me, there were there was a section of gutters here above the front door, but that was removed for the re-roof. We had to change the fascia there. And the downspout here is still hanging off. So we're gonna have to put new gutters and downspout here once the roof is complete. So the downspout is what comes down the wall. That's what brings the water down to the ground. That's why it's called downspout, a spout that goes down. The gutters are the part that hangs on the eave of the roof and catches the water that's running off of the roof. So the gutters catch the water running off the roof. It goes down into a drop tube, down the downspout, and then it drains wherever you run the downspouts down the wall and into the yard or into a French drain or somewhere. Believe it or not, there are a lot more roof details that we didn't get into in this video. Uh, but we tried to keep this video brief this video is meant to educate homeowners, not roofers, so that homeowners can see the different types of roofs and understand a roofing contract, and then they'll know what they're buying. Uh, so if you're a homeowner or you're a roofer and you have a question or comment or wanna learn more about different types of parts of the roof, then just comment in the video and we'll respond. Thanks.